So we're nearing the end of the working day and we thought it'd be a really good time to have a nice relaxing workout. So we're going to hear from the English Institute of Sports, followed by Sport England, then followed by a PMS yoga session. And then we're going to speak to Hannah Whelan from Bloody Good Period to find out about the new blog card. Hi, my name is Dr. Emma Ross and I'm a physiologist, which means I study the human body and its inner workings. In particular, I work with women to understand the effects of the menstrual cycle on their lived experience of their health, their well-being and performance. And over the past few years, I've worked with Olympic and Paralympic athletes to help them understand how their menstrual cycle can be part of their superpowers, as well as how they might overcome some of the challenges that their menstrual cycle can bring. Did you know that the hormones of your cycle can help you as an exerciser or an athlete and not just hinder you? The hormone estrogen, which rises and peaks in the first half of your cycle, can increase the levels of our feel-good hormone, serotonin, making us feel motivated and more ready to go out and move. Estrogen may also help us recover more quickly from that hard workout because it shortens the duration of our muscle soreness following hard workouts. In the second half of the cycle, when progesterone rises and peaks and estrogen is also elevated, it's been shown that we might have better sleep, which could help us feel more rested and ready to go and move the next day. We can also find endurance exercise feels easier at this time of the cycle because the hormones help our body make energy in a way that suits longer workouts. I encourage all athletes to tune into their own unique experience of the cycle so they can use these benefits of their hormones ebbing and flowing um, to help their performance and their well-being. But what about the challenging symptoms of the menstrual cycle? As those hormones fall from their peak, they can often leave us with symptoms which don't make us feel like moving at all. But exercise is a great strategy to alleviate lots of the symptoms associated with the menstrual cycle, like period pain, bloating, headache and anxiety. Whether it's yoga or light or moderate exercise like hiking, running, cycling or a workout class, the chemicals your body releases when you exercise, called endorphins, act as a natural painkiller and a mood elevator, which can really help your symptoms. It's also been shown that more frequent exercises have, have left less severe symptoms than those who don't exercise at all. So the long-term health benefits of exercise also extend to making your cycle symptoms more manageable. So not exercising when you have symptoms or during your period is a myth that I'd like to dispel. Movement, whether it's gentle exercise or sport, is great for alleviating symptoms and making you feel good. For some women, it's even when they achieve their best performances. Paula Radcliffe broke the marathon world record, even with period cramps during the final part of the race. And Uta Pippig famously won the Boston Marathon in 1996 with menstrual blood dripping down her leg as she crossed the finish line. The most important thing to remember is that we all experience our menstrual cycle differently. And so tuning in to what your experience of your cycle is like, perhaps by tracking or keeping a diary, will help you know when you have days when you feel great, and ready to go, and, and when you might need some extra help from your diet or lifestyle to combat symptoms and help keep you feeling good. When it comes to managing menstruation in sport, my advice is to do what feels best for you and not what other people are doing or what other women in your family have traditionally used. Don't be afraid to try new period products out to see which one suits you, your body, uh, and what exercise or movement you're trying to achieve. If you're trying to do sports like swimming or where you have to wear skimpy uh, bottoms, pads aren't often feasible. So try a product you can insert vaginally like a tampon or a menstrual cup or try period underwear. It's really your choice and you need to get to know what works for you. One challenge we find in sport is the facilities and the venues that women use have often been designed for men in a time before women played the game or they trained alongside the men. And those facilities sometimes reflect this bygone era with inadequate or no disposal facilities for period products in the toilet cubicles. If you find that's the case where you are, make sure you talk to your facilities manager so you can make a change. 
Finally, it's so wonderful to be able to contribute to this Menstrual Hygiene Day video. In sport, we need to talk more about periods and the menstrual cycle. We need to banish the idea that periods somehow make women weaker sports people than men. Our menstrual cycle, its hormones and the effects they have on our body is incredible. In sport, we often use a technique with guys called priming. It increases their testosterone level. They might watch videos of themselves doing brilliant things or competing against their main rivals. This priming aims to increase testosterone so the guys go out onto the pitch feeling confident, aggressive um, and, and ready to perform well. We need to have that mindset around female hormones their ebb and their flow across the cycle, they offer amazing benefits for when we want to exercise and perform as women, and we should celebrate that. I've been Dr. Emma Ross, have a great day. Hi, I'm Christine from Namaste at Home Yoga. Today's focus is on relieving that pain that is associated with your menstrual cycle. The reason we're putting a spotlight on that is on partnership today with iRise International Charity, is really focused on one world period. And in that sense, it's about making sure that the taboo that's associated with menstruation, with periods is taken away through education and that the availability for menstruation products is available to not only those in your country you reside in, but all across the globe. If you think about some really harrowing stats, 10% of girls in the UK, one in 10 are unable to get menstruation products. That's in the UK. If you think about that on a wider scale, in Uganda, you've got 50% of girls that are missing school because they do not have menstruation materials. And even worse than that, if they do have menstruation materials, they're often ad hoc, improvised, and maybe raw and dirty materials. So the amount of infections that run with that is quite extreme as well. So 30% of, of girls will be using ad hoc materials. That's something in this modern day we shouldn't have available in the organization of the entire world. We should all be looking for that equality that every single girl will not be held back by her period. So today's focus of this yoga class is to make sure that we take away any of your menstruation pains through the power of yoga and sending your breath to certain areas. So join with me, come into a comfortable cross leg seated position we're going to sit nice and tall, extending through the chest, opening up wide, snuggling those shoulder blades behind, sitting up, lengthening through the lower part of the body. In this position, we're going to do some kundalini circles. So that's really circling through the midsection of the body, which is going to do an internal massage for those organs. So sitting tall, we're going to take the chest, inhale here. Taking the chest over the right knee, rolling through, extending through that back pushing over the left knee, rolling through, really caving through your midsection here. Once again, rolling through over the right knee, pushing forward, bringing that chest, that heart chakra forward, rolling over your left neck, and then again, concaving the body here. We're going to reverse the circles, follow with, over the left knee, chest comes forward, pushing through, coming over the right, and then concaving through, really curving your spine here. One last time, rolling through, past your left knee, through the midline, past the right, coming through, curving the spine, and then coming back up into your neutral spine position. From this position here, we wanna make sure we're always sitting nice and tall. We're gonna bring the soles of our feet together in what's called butterfly. So bringing the soles of the feet together, Normally we'd be asking you to bring your soles closer into the midline of the body. I want you to bring them further out, almost half a yoga mat's distance away from your pelvis. With that, you can take your hands, place them around your feet. We're gonna extend the elbows out wide towards our knees, dialing our knees towards the yoga mat. We're going to start to lean forward as you exhale, rolling down, rolling forward, releasing the head towards your feet. Wherever you land is completely fine, just keeping your back nice and straight in this position. You can use the bind or the holding of your feet to pull you further down. We're gonna hold this for three more breaths. Long exhales here. Two more breaths. We're really compressing those internal organs, giving them a nice little massage and extending through our lower back, which can be an area of pain. 
on your next inhale tuck the chin rolling up coming on through up into neutral spine from here we're going to come up onto the yoga mat in our tabletop position so hands and knees so follow through with me into your tabletop in this position I want you to spread the palms nice and wide so palms are spread wide our index fingers are pointing towards the short edge of the mat we've got stacked bone on bone and bone wrist under elbows under shoulders and our hips are directly over our knees so our knees are coming into our hip points as we inhale here we're going to do some cat cows as we inhale fill the lungs pushing that belly button towards the yoga mat tailbone rolls up and back looking up towards the ceiling and opening through the chest and as you exhale rolling through pull that stomach in towards the midline of the body looking towards our belly button really opening up through that shoulder girdle and again as you inhale looking up opening up through the chest pushing that tailbone up and back belly comes towards the yoga mat one more time rolling through exhale empty the stomach looking towards our belly button really pushing through that shoulder girdle pulling our stomach in and as you inhale just coming back to your neutral spine position here we're now going to just do some cat curls so it's an unusual one what you'll do is as you exhale so inhale to prepare as we exhale we're going to curl the body looking towards our hip so pointing our hip into our line of sight and then as you inhale coming back to neutral spine and again curling our body so we bring the hip in towards the eye line and then as you inhale back to neutral spine exhaling again curling through looking towards that hip and as you inhale back to neutral spine last one on this side curling through looking towards that hip and inhale back to neutral spine we're going to push back into balasana or your child's pose but it's wide leg bringing the knees as wide as the yoga mat big toes come to touch behind sinking the hips back Glutes come to sit onto our heels, walking the hands forward. We're going to release our head towards the yoga mat, pushing our heart chakra towards the floor to really flatten out our spine. In this position, if flexibility doesn't prevail and you are not able to release the, yoga, the head to the yoga mat at this stage of your practice, just bring the floor towards you, stack the, your arms on top of each other, and then release your forehead towards the little pillow that you've created and just release that chest towards the floor we're here for five breaths really sink down in this position four more breaths nice long inhales long exhales out three more breaths two more breaths One long last breath. And as you inhale, carving a line with the nose, the nose comes up first, weight comes into the palms. Coming back up onto our, our fingertips here, walking the hands back towards our knees, bringing the knees in towards the midline of the body. We're going to bump our hips to one side and then flicking our legs out around in front of us to come back to lie on the yoga mat. <clears throat> so we're bringing the right knee in, hugging that into your armpit chest region. Just do three small circles there in one direction and then reverse the circles to the other side. Taking the left hand on top of the right knee, dialing it across the midsection of the body, extending it down at the same time, releasing your right hand behind you. You're going to look towards your right hand and feel that nice twist through the center and midline of the body. A bit of a, a ringing out of the internal organs as well. We're here for three more breaths, two more breaths, 
and on your next breath as you inhale bringing that knee back towards the midline of the body hugging it in towards your chest and releasing it down towards the mat you pick up the left leg pulling that in towards the armpit chest region repeat the same on the other side so we're going to just do some small circles three in one direction and then three in the other And then taking our right hand on top of our left knee, we're going to dial it across the midsection of the body, releasing the left hand out long, looking towards our left extended hand away from the bent knee. And take three long inhales and exhales here. Two more breaths. One more breath. And using the muscles of your abdomen, pulling that knee back in towards the midline of the body. Give it one more hug in towards the chest. Releasing it back down long. <clears throat> We're going to let both of our, our feet flop to the side, opening up our palms, come to either side of the body. In this one, just a small tilt of the pelvis towards the face. And we're here in Shavasana. So this is where you would close your eyes and just focus on your breathing. Inhale and exhale and just send that breath towards any part of the body that you would like release. It's at this stage of the video that I'm going to leave you in this position of Shavasana. Stay here as long as you like, really focusing on those inhales and exhales. This is your time for relaxation and self-love. So dedicate that time on your own mat. From me, as always, hands to my heart center, up to my third eye, I bow to you, namaste. Thank you, everybody. Hi, everyone in lockdown land. I'm Sarah Zip, and I'm here to talk today about menstruation and sport. So I'm a researcher in sports studies and a lecturer. And when I started to look at why adolescent girls drop out of sport, I realized that there's this issue of the menstrual cycle and menstruation and puberty that we don't really have a good under understanding of. So I've tried to do some more research to better understand girls' experiences and also to find ways to support them. And with my partner, Lilamani de Soisa, we are working on developing resources and new approaches for coaches, athletes, parents, everyone involved in supporting girls staying active in sport, physical activity, and physical education. So often, the issue of menstruation and the menstrual cycle is off limits. It's taboo. There's so much stigma and shame around the menstrual cycle, a natural life process. And I think that's really the heart of the problem. There's a lot of research that will support that. Um, we hear a lot about products and availability of free provisions around the world, and that's important. But let's remember the heart of the problem is the stigma, and we need to have more and more conversations like this one to help support people. So we do have some research. Um, this is coming from the UK and around the globe. I've done some research as well in Zambia. Um, I've worked with partners who are researching adolescents from all around the world. And there are some common themes, right? These key concerns. People are afraid of leaking. They're afraid of the shame and the stigma of being discovered of having a period. Um, there are concerns about not enough education. They don't know enough about the menstrual cycle and we don't know early enough. There's some um, discussions around boys that should learn too. That's related to some teasing that can happen at schools. And in relation to sports specifically, simple things like the kit that they wear, white shorts, things like that, toilets, changing rooms, those can all be problems and barriers and challenges for young people. We also um, hear a lot about coping with pain, fatigue, and symptoms, and how people are free to exercise while on their period, but also we know from research that exercise can help support um, dealing with pain and symptoms. So the good news is, in the Break the Barrier study from Plan UK, we found that girls are feeling more able to talk openly about their periods now. That culture of taboo is changing. 
So what can we do about it? Well, Lil and I have put together some of the research and talked to coaches and talked to people from all around the world and have tried to develop some resources and an approach to supporting young people and menstrual health and sport. The first step, tackle the taboo. We have to have these conversations. Remember that stigma and the shame and the secrecy are really the underlying problems. Secondly, we need to have more education. People need to understand the complete menstrual cycle, and that includes athletes, coaches, teachers, families, and let's not forget about the guys too. Boys and men should have a basic understanding of the menstrual cycle, especially since so many men are, uh, so many coaches are men. The third step, products. Um, products should be accessible, safe, free. We need to look at age-friendly products, sustainable products, and let's also not forget the knowledge on how to use them. And the last but not least step in this process is coping. So understanding and supporting girls who are coping with physical pain, emotional stress, and the related symptoms. And often they're doing this for the very first time or for the first few years of experiencing their menstrual cycle. We know that exercise can help, but we also know that we need to talk about some basic things like kit, gear, toilets, and other ways that we can support young people. So thank you for listening. I hope this has been helpful. You can reach out and contact us if you have more questions. Follow me on Twitter where I try to retweet and share resources, new research, new campaigns, new ideas. Um, so let's tackle this taboo and keep girls in sport and physical activity. Cheers. I started working out on my periods and actually found if I get it early on, that it actually can relieve some of the pain and it's a good distraction. Whereas like some people don't like to say they're on their period. I pretty much announce it everywhere I go. I'm not shy about that, it's normal. No one should be ashamed to work out or just go about their days. I'm in the store like I wanna have it, I gotta have it. You were not the toughest or baddest, my pen is the madness. I probably end it, could lose, and it's never right about this. May as well get a birthday cake in it, ain't even my birthday. Cause when I switch, then they wanna say that I'm a You're not listening.